Well, welcome to another rather somber edition of 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. And I say somber for a reason. Because on February 15th, which was a day or so ago, we lost an icon in the film industry, Raquel Welch. I believe she was 82 years old. Um, I believe I already done an episode on Raquel, so I'm not going to go over um, that, that ground anymore. Um, basically, Raquel was a phenomenon. She started in the early 60s. And pretty much her peak was one million years B.C. when she uh, was the cave woman in that. And um, I don't know how many times I went to see that movie, and my parents always thought I was going to see the cool dinosaurs. Yeah, I like. Yeah, right. I was really. But anyway, um, Raquel was a huge part of. Uh, Grindhouse films too, because most of the films she did wound up in the grindhouses, and we could talk about, you know, One Million Years B.C., Mother Jugs and Speed, Bandolero, Kansas City Bomber, all the stuff that she did that was high profile, but some stuff that she did sort of slips through the cracks, and um, I just wanted to like basically, you know, talk about briefly though a few films like that that you know were just as good but for whatever reason don't get you know the recognition or whatever and um, one of them is Lady in Cement I believe that was around 1968 where this was the last I believe Tony Rome Frank Sinatra vehicle and um, it was also the, the big screen debut of Dan Blocker, who was in the hugely popular TV series Bonanza as Horse Cartwright. Um, Lady in Cement opens up with uh, Frank doing some skin diving, looking for treasure, when he finds this blonde that basically is naked and is wearing cement overshoes, as my people used to do back in the day. You wanted to get rid of somebody, you uh, stuck them in killed them, stuck their feet in a tub of cement, and tossed it overboard somewhere. So basically, he finds this blonde, you know, uh, partially obscured by seaweed, completely naked, in cement, and then Frank basically has to fight off a few uh, sharks. You know Frank ain't the one in the skin diver's outfit. He may have been wearing the skin diver's outfit on the ship, but you know damn well that Frank ain't the one underwater with these sharks. Also, if this was today, that body wouldn't be perfectly formed. It would have chunks bitten out of it and crabs crawling out of its eye sockets and shit like that because, hey, up in the year 2000 or whatever, we just do graphic shit just for the fuck of it. But anyway, they didn't. So this is basically became a mystery because um, Tony Rome is contracted by Waldo Gronsky, played by Dan Blocker, who is a heist guy and a crook. And he's looking for this chick named Sandra who took him off. Uh, Sandra is friends with this other woman, Kit Forrest, played by Raquel Welch, who makes her debut coming out of a swimming pool in a bikini, which basically all eyes are on her. Um, the thing about this film is that um, Frank seems to be phoning it in because he was going through his divorce with Mia Farrow, and from what I understand, he was pretty much... A, a dick to the director, Gordon Douglas, who had directed him four times previous. Um, Frank being a douchebag on set is no, you know, no really um, new news because um, on 4 for Texas, he pissed off the director to the point where the director wanted to replace him with someone else. Um, there was another movie, I believe it might have been Young Doctors or something like that, something with a hospital. But he pissed off co-star Broderick Crawford so much that Crawford actually attacked him and ate the toupee off his head and spit it out. So, if I had to choose between a better actor is between Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra, Dean gets the nod because it seems like Frank usually was just phoning it in. But anyway, when the camera's on Raquel and the camera's on Dan Blocker, Frank, it's faded off into the thing. They sort of take up the screen and... Uh, Looking at the two act opposite Frank, you see who the better actors are in this thing, which would be Raquel and Dan Blocker. Unfortunately, Dan Blocker passed away soon after this film from a pulmonary embolism at the age of 43, and when you watch this film and you see him playing Waldo Gronsky, you could see what a force he would have been as an actor if he had, you know, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Um, 
But yeah, Raquel was the one who stole the show, and it's a who done it, and it winds up that she was being set up for the murder of the woman in cement by some neighborhood mobsters who basically Gronsky was partners with the son of a mobster and knocked off his daddy's card games. So it all ends well, but that was one of the films that sort of like, she was in, she, when she, the camera was on her, the camera was on her. That's all you saw. Frank was sort of a background thing. Um, there was another film also in 68, uh, an international film called The Biggest Bundle of Them All, where a gang of inept crooks decide to capture gangster Vittorio De Sica and hold him for ransom, $50,000. What well, seems like this old gangster isn't worth anything to anybody, which sort of pisses him off. So he recruits the kidnappers, which are Robert Wagner, Raquel Welch, uh, Godfrey Cambridge, and actually Edward G. Robinson, into forming a new gang and doing some new crimes. So that's just another one that she was in. Uh, she's pretty much just eye candy in this, and there's another one called Flare Up in 1969 where she plays a go-go girl being stalked by a psycho, and her co-stars were Lucas Skew and James Stacy. Raquel did a lot of other films. I mean, if you look up her filmography, it's a ton of stuff. I mean, she basically acted with a who's who of great actors, and it was like back in the, in the 60s and early 70s, Raquel was it, and she stayed it for quite a while. I mean, she went on tours with Bob Hope in Vietnam during the war. I mean, she was just all over the map, and it was like, you know, she was in movies like Fuzz with Burt Reynolds. Of course, you know, the, the, the 100 Rifles with Burt Reynolds and Jim Brown. Uh, Mother Jugs and Speed with Harvey Keitel, Bill Cosby, L.Q. Jones, and others. Um, Haney Calder with Robert Culp, Ernest Borgnine, Jack Elliman, Strother Martin, and the list just goes on and on. And it's like, I'm sitting here doing this, and I just feel like a huge chunk of my past is, is gone forever, you know, losing her. I mean, I don't know who um, the sex symbols from the 60s and 70s are left anymore, because we lost Gina Lola Brigida a few uh, weeks ago. And the only two I can think of that are still with us are Ursula Andrus and Elkie Summer. But um, losing Raquel, damn, it, it's just, you know, all I can say is thank you, Raquel. Thank you for, uh, you know, showing up during the time I hit puberty with 1 million BC and causing my little hormones to go fucking crazy. And thanks for the body of work you've done, because I basically have seen just about every action thing you've done through the 60s and 70s up until the 80s. Kansas City Bomber, Bandolero, just great, great stuff. So thank you, and may you rest in peace. And um, to continue something I said before about the health issues, um, I'm going to lay this out there. A lot of people have PM'd me and emailed me asking, you know, anything you need, anything you can do. No, just keep watching the channel. I, I appreciate your support. I appreciate your kindness and generosity. I'm not going to take advantage of my fans. Um, if I need something, I'll put it out there. Right now, um, you know, I'm all right. I mean, you know, I'm a little shook up about what's been going on because the medical profession kind of sucks. And I had to go for a little, little bit of this out. You know, it doesn't really fucking matter. I had to go for a calcium score with the heart thing, and it showed up that I had plaque in my arteries and also some kind of aneurysm. Well, aneurysm isn't good, and before I could really do anything about it, my chiropractor quit the practice over some bullshit going on with these hospitals. Um, my primary care physician decided to assign me to a new cardiologist who I googled and had one star, and it seems that this gentleman uh, almost killed somebody during surgery, so no, I'm not fucking going there. I got a hold of another cardiologist that worked with this one, who was in the same office, and I got an appointment with them on 313 to see what I have to do to deal with this shit. Again, these people drop you in midstream and don't tell you anything, and it's bad. The other thing was, I took a Cologuard test, and it turned out positive. I just went to see uh, the person who did the last colonoscopy on me, which was a little over a year and a half ago, and they said, why did you take the Cologuard test? And I said, because it was ordered by my primary care doctor. Well, they said, you had taken one before and it turned out positive. And I'm like, what? 
Well, it seems that my former office that basically fucked up everything and, and told me, uh, this is another one, a nurse practitioner that told me I had one hernia not to worry about it, but when I went back and found out that that wasn't the case, I had four fucking hernias and I had to worry about it. And I had a colonoscopy then. They never told me that office that that Cologuard test came back positive. So, all right, I got to deal with this shit. I'll go for the colonoscopy. It's going to be on the 28th, and I'll get that over with. I'm hoping there ain't nothing fucking wrong. But dealing with these fucking morons that leave practices and mid mid diagnosis, then you got to deal with the fallout. I mean, I walked around for a fucking year and a half with four fucking major hernias because of this shit. And my advice to anybody watching this and to my friends and fans is when you get a diagnosis, go over it with a fine tooth comb because I'm hoping you people have better doctors than I've been running across. But to be honest with you, ever since I had the prostate cancer and they almost killed me there with a mid-diagnosis and then let me know that I had diverticulitis and not doing anything about it, I'm very guarded about this shit. And I honestly, I didn't see a doctor for 10 fucking years after the cancer shit because they kept dropping the ball. And then when I see one, I wind up that I have basically, you know, I, I think I mentioned this, that I lost 18 inches of colon due, due to diverticulitis that went unchecked for years. So, again, you trust your doctor fine, but don't be afraid to question doctors. And they don't like that. They don't like it when I challenge them because... Some of these people actually think that, you know, this is an end-all, be-all, that they're the god of medicine. No, you're not. you got a, a degree to practice medicine, medicine, and the key word is practice. And you know the human body, but you don't know my body. So all I'm saying is I'm doing the best I can. I appreciate all the kind words and the thoughts and stuff like that and the offers to help me out. I really do. It, it, it touches me, and uh, I'm glad I have, you know, fans and friends like that out there. I'll get through this. I'll do my best to get through it, and if I need help, I'll sell something right here because that's what I do. So again, my sincere thanks, and again about Raquel, may she rest in peace. She's an icon, and she will live forever through her work and through what she accomplished in, in the movie industry. So I'll keep you posted on what's going on with me, but until next time, please stay safe. When you get checked out, question everything because you don't know. You really don't know, and these people don't know. And it's become such a rigmarole, even before the pandemic. You know, it, it's sort of like, it ain't good. So little knowledge is helpful. So again, my thanks. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you on the flip side.